Good morning, folks. <clears throat> Welcome to church. I'm just trying to work out how many weeks we have been on lockdown, probably coming on about 13, 14 weeks that we've been joining together through this medium. And again, we just thank everybody who has made this possible. We thank all of those who are working behind the scenes that we can get this little broadcast going and keeping everything moving, both with our morning service here and also the Young People's Program on a, a Friday evening. Thank you all for working so hard. Thank you all for, for the support that you have been giving to each other through telephone calls uh, and messages. It, I know it's much appreciated within the congregation. But we come together this morning and we want to give thanks to God for his goodness as we meet. And first of all, I want to just extend our congratulations uh, to Bill and Catherine on becoming grandparents to the little granddaughter, Katie. Uh, and this is the first of their grandchildren, so we trust that the Lord will continue to lead and guide them. And we would ask them to express our congratulations to Lisa and Stephen on the safe delivery of their little daughter. And we pray that God will bless them as a family circle in the coming days. Our prayers are also with the Neil family. We remember Craig and his sisters at this time on the death of Billy last Sunday. And as everyone has commented, we have lost the company of a true gentleman. And uh, the Lord called him home quietly last Sunday. And we give thanks to God for his life and his testimony amongst us here in the church. We continue also to remember young Carter um, in hospital in Birmingham. It's been a turbulent week, as you've known, if you've been following us uh, on our prayer requests. He has had a, a, an initial transplant and as I record this service, they're waiting to see what further needs to be done after the liver has failed. And we, can, we must continue to pray for Alan and Claire and Adam and Alex because it, it is bound to be taking its toll on them physically and emotionally. And we just lift them up before the throne of grace. And I thank all those who have been praying. But also, as we've been reminded during the week, we remember those donor families who have willingly uh, given the opportunity for, for, for the possibility of, of improved lifestyle, life uh, to, to all who benefited from their donation. Pray for the medical team that you'll continue to give them, that God will continue to give them wisdom. Also, we remember May in hospital uh, and in these last number of days, the beginning, the preparation for discharge. Uh, and we pray for her, that God would surround her with his presence, but also for Leslie and Jim as they make the arrangements that God would clearly lead them and guide them. But let's come together in prayer this morning as we seek God's face. Gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that this indeed is the Lord's day as we meet together around this service. We thank you it's a day when we remember the fact that our Saviour not only died but rose again, and has completed that great work of redemption and has opened a way for us to come into the presence of God, pleading not our own merits, but the finished work of Christ. And Lord, we thank you for that hope that is ours. We thank you for that assurance that we are in the company of the beloved and that as we pray, you hear our prayers and answer according to your will. Lord, we thank you for, for, for all that you have done for us in these past days, for preserving us, for strengthening us and being encouraging us through difficult and challenging times in each of our lives. And particularly, Lord, we thank you that you have guided and directed in the midst of our fellowship, that you have been to all of your people that strength that they have needed, particularly in dark times. <clears throat> we again continue to give thanks for new life, but we also give thanks, Lord, for the lives of those that we have lost and loved and who have gone home to be with you. And Lord, this morning again, we just lift up before you uh, Billy's family. We remember Craig and Susan and Roberta and all of the family circle that at this time you would surround them with your love and with your presence. We thank you for the testimony of Bill's life left behind, that it would continue to inspire and encourage. We continue too, Lord, to remember those in hospital. We think of our dear friend May. Bless her at this time. Continue to strengthen her body. We remember young Carter, Lord, who's at the heart of all of us as we, as we look at, at, at each of our children. We just pray for him. We pray for Alan and Claire and the boys that you would surround them with your love. 
And indeed, Lord, we come lifting up all our family circles. Lord, for some of us, we are not able to see our children or grandchildren because of distance, because of, of the fact that we have to, to shield in these days. But Lord, we thank you that in our minds and our hearts, we just lift them up before you. They're precious to us and they're precious to you. And we pray, Lord, where they don't know you as Savior, that in these days, they would, would seek you and find you. Lord, we thank you for the guidance that you've been giving to our leaders in these days. We pray that you'll preserve our province. Lord, as things move forward, as uh, new opportunities are presented to us, Lord, that you'll keep us safe and that we will be wise in all that we do. And particularly, Lord, in the whole area of mission and evangelism, may we as, as followers of Jesus Christ, may we as the church be a witness to your love and, and the confidence that we have in your purposes and plans. Be with our leaders here in the church, our Kirk Session, as they to seek to discuss the way forward in the coming days. Be with our organization leaders, Lord, as they look to a new session and the possibility or, or, or the lack of it of being able to get back to programs. Lord, we just pray that you will watch over us, continue to guard and guide us. And we pray for those who are on the front line of all that's happening at the moment, those members of our own congregation, but also those right across the community. Be with them and bless them. Lord, we thank you that our times enter in your hands and that you are sovereign in all things and we rest content in you this morning. Lord, as we come to you, we come sharing together as a family in that prayer when you taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Boys and girls, I hope you have been following us over these past number of weeks. I actually miss talking to you, but I think our little series with, uh, with Douglas is, uh, is excellent. And this morning we're moving to the third commandment. We trust that you will learn and that you will be blessed by uh, the ministry of, of the puppets. And we trust that everyone, as we go into this new week, <coughs> will just know God's blessing and God's encouragement. But we want to read some verses uh, from 1 Samuel chapter 22. And I want to read just the first five verses, which we'll be looking at a little later on with mums and dads. 1 Samuel chapter 22. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Abdullah when his brothers and father's household heard about it. They went down to him there for those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him and he became their leader. About 400 men were with him. From there, David went to Mizpah in Moab and said to the king of Moab, would you let my father and mother come and stay with you until I learn what God will do for me? So he left them there with the king of Moab, and they stayed with him as long as David was in the stronghold. But the prophet of God, a prophet God, said to David, Do not stay in the stronghold. Go into the land of Judah. So David left and went to the forest of Hereth. And we thank God for his word. And if, you're, if you have the opportunity, just read through the whole chapter uh, uh, as parents, just to, to see the flow of that story because we're going to look at how God leads and guides and prepares his people. But have a great week, and we trust that God will bless you as we, uh, as we continue in our, our ministry through song and word.